Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Association of PEMF Professionals weekly broadcast. I'm Jerry Dreesen, the AOPP Executive Director. And I wanna start out by uh, welcoming everybody and hopefully that you are able to find the four leaf clover in your life today. We've got St. Patrick's Day uh, coming up here and I just wanted to kind of throw that one out there on our on our welcome screen here. But the uh, other thing that I wanted to talk about too was some of the questions I'm seeing not only in our um, AOPP group, uh, but also in our um, all the other uh, PEMF chat rooms that are out there. And, and people are asking about low back pain. And I've had uh, some people ask me personally, it's like, well, how do you, you know, what do you do about low back pain? Somebody says they've got low back pain. Will PEMF help? Well, that's, it's a great question. And it's one that we, we cover a lot inside the membership. That's part of our, our educational series. But I thought since it's really important, I wanted to touch bases on some of these things. Cause when a person uh, has low back pain and they want to know if you can, you know, use PEMF on the area, I think that this is a uh, really good information to learn. Uh, also, uh, I don't know if you know this, but our um, association has 11 countries in it. So we have the US, the UK, the Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, New Zealand, Mexico, Israel, India, Canada, and Australia. So we're an international group, not just the uh, United States and Canada. So we are reaching out and more and more people that have PEMF devices are finding us and just love all of the things that we're able to present and teach and educate and talk about. So I wanted to cover that real quick. But the main thing is, you know, what is inside our membership? And one of them, one of the things we have in there are the tools to answer these questions. I have a bulging disc or I have back pain. And if you go on the internet, in fact, I encourage you to do this and you just type in um, bulging disc, you're going to see a ton of pictures and it literally shows you all of the different types of uh, injuries that can cause back pain, whether it's a you know, herniated disc putting pressure on a nerve, which this is a plastic model uh, to some other really cool models here. In fact, I like this bottom one that's right right next to me right there. Uh, and I brought it into the next slide, which I want to show you. Oh, I got to click it here. There we go. And what you can see is on a disc, you've got this fibrous material. And so these are rings that are called the annulus fibrosis. And then we have this goop on the inside. It's called the nucleus pulposus. Uh, but there can be a tear through that. And this is a basic tear that hasn't gone all the way through, but because of that tear that's happened, this fluid is now pushing through into that tear, causing a bulge, which is going on the nerve roots. And this is a, it's a classic um, bulge and there's different phases there. This is like a, a different grades. This is like a grade one, grade two is where this fluid goes into that tear more grade three is where there's an actual bulge like we were uh seeing on some of these other ones where you actually have you know the, the actual herniation where there's uh, pressure against it and then there's where it rips all the way through and now the fluids on the inside of the spinal canal and that's that's an emergency surgery if they don't clear that out they're going to have permanent nerve damage so those are the things that we're looking at. Now, the other part of this is just the components of the back. And you can have just the, 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 the facet joint, which is right here. That could be a sprain strain. That can cause low back pain. You can have the vertebra out of alignment, which is a subluxation. Those are things chiropractors fix. That can cause back pain. The muscles that run up and down the spine they can tear or rip or um, sprain, um, or excuse me, strain. The, the ligament strain, the muscle sprain. 
And so all of those things can cause pain. So you can have minor injuries that cause pain. You can have major injuries that cause pain. And one of the things that we see with a disc bulge are people applying a, a high powered PEMF unit over the area of pain, which causes the back muscles to contract. And with these uh, contractions, as it's, as it's contracting, it's causing that disc to push out a little bit more into that tear. And people can walk away with excruciating pain after using a higher powered PEMF device. And this, these are reasons why you need to investigate and find out why these people are having these problems. If it's like I bent over and, you know, I strained my back and my back hurts, it's just muscle pain. That's pretty easy. You know, uh, PEMF is designed for those kinds of things. But if they say, I think I have a herniated disc or I have a herniated disc, they're going to know because they saw a medical professional who did an MRI or took x-rays to show that there's some kind of a, a loss of disc height. But the MRI is going to show that the disc bulge itself. And then there's different grading systems. There's a grade one, which is minor, grade two. You know, it's got more of a tear like we see here. And then grade three where it goes out all the way. Now, one of the other things that you need to understand is with these kinds of disc problems, I'm going to I'm going to zoom in on this right here with another slide, which really explains it. You can now see that we have the tearing of that annulus and the uh, other thing about that is this system itself has its own set of nerves. There's nerves that wrap all the way around this. And as these get breached, then those can cause um, back pain as well. And so you've got these sensory nerves um, that cause back spasms. So they may have like this first breach right here. And the system is irritated and it causes back spasms. And because of that, now they have back pain but they don't know that they have a herniation yet. And that pain can go all, all the way up, <clears throat> like between the shoulders, all the way down, down the leg, like a sciatica pain. Uh, and that can be caused just from uh, this little change right here. But now it sets the stage for more damage as it goes through. And that fluid starts to work its way as uh, it goes through. Now, another thing that can happen is you can have just a little pinhole. It doesn't have to like rip all the way through. Just imagine that this is like a little tunnel that's only a millimeter wide. Some of this fluid can leak out and it's like battery acid when it hits a nerve. So it's not a bulge disc, it's not torn. It's not a grade one or two or three. This, this is like a grade three where it's ripped all the way through and wants to bulge up. And you can see that herniation here. But if it's a pinhole leak and that uh, disc gets a little um, compression, it's going to have a little bit of a squirt of that fluid. And like I said, that is a caustic fluid that's on the nerve. Another interesting fact about this too is that a um, that caustic sensory happens in our mid-20s. So it's around 25 is when we start to actually feel the pain from that. So a teenager can have a pinhole leak like this and not feel the caustic pain, but might have, you know, like, like back soreness. But it's not until we reach 25, 26 years old that uh, that pinhole leak begins to hurt. So we'll have people come in and ask, you know, well, when did you hurt yourself? And it's like, you know, they're 25. It's like, I've done nothing. You can go back eight, nine years to, find the initial injury, like they were snowboarding and, and did a jump and landed hard. So, you know, those are some of the things that we, we source out or not source out, but, you know, interrogate, uh, you know, and play sleuth, the Sherlock Holmes of healthcare and determine what's going on. So the other thing too, that's inside our membership, I kind of talked about this uh, last week is we have, um, chart notes and brochures and things like that, where we track this information. But when you get human certified through our courses, you'll learn all of these things, what questions to ask, what to write down, what to chart, um, whether you should use 
PEMF on somebody or not. And I've personally, I've used PEMF on a chiropractor. And I told them specifically, do not turn this up. Leave the dial where I have it, which is on very low. And some people are, if you can't feel it, it's not working. This is the herniations are where you can use low. And if you have a high powered one, you put it on its lowest setting. And for some reason, when I wasn't looking, he decided he wanted to turn it up so that he could feel it. Because we were using it on other parts of his body, like on his legs and things. And so he could feel that and and, and the sensation of the muscles contracting. Uh, but he moved it up and he felt okay. But it wasn't until that night uh, that he had excruciating pain. and he, he injured himself because he wasn't listening to me and following my advice and some of these people if they're you know if they're within arm's length of the device and they think they know what they're doing those are the people you need to stop uh you know put up um and, and be with them during their care and make sure they don't touch it or what i do now is i tell my patients with this problems that i'm treating i tell them this story so that way they know not to do it and you have my permission to use my story uh, to help you out too. Um, and then, uh, uh, let's see, where are we? So those are some of the things that you need to learn when you're working on discs and low back pain. And again, inside our membership, we've got the chart notes, the brochures, the education that tells you how to discern those things. So that's why we would like to have you become a member, unless you're getting this education already from the machines that you purchase, those companies, have that certification but if in their certifications or education they don't talk about hurting a discs in low back then it's really important that you come on board now between now and the end of the month we have a special code and we'll put it down here uh in the feed where you can get a um a discount on membership and uh lauren put that together last week so we'll have it down below and those of you who are on the fence about joining, this is, if you think about it, all of the things you're getting for the amount that you're paying is amazing uh, as far as the education that you're getting from this. So I encourage all of you that are on the fence, take advantage of our, of our coupon. It's only good to the end of the month. And that is the, um, the four leaf clover <laughs> that is here for you, the luck of the Irish, uh, by being and watching this uh, broadcast here, uh, you'll be able to use that coupon again. It, it expires um, at the end of the month. So if you like what you're seeing here uh, and you've got other friends that are doing um, EMF, then we just ask that you like and share. We're on Facebook, as you know. Um, we have a Association of PEMF Professionals LinkedIn page. We have an Instagram and we have YouTube. Uh, what's happening right now this week is we're also interviewing people that have had experience with PEMF and what they're doing in their, their life with PEMF and, and uh, with AOPP. And we're recording those right now all this week. And then we'll be creating those and they'll be on Facebook. They'll be in YouTube uh, and LinkedIn. So uh, we uh, really appreciate those of you who um, stepped up and asked us to... Uh, contact you so we can get this going and then finally on an absolutely non-PEMF AOPP note um, this is those of you that are looking for some low pack low impact aerobics that want to get up and start moving their body around now that COVID's lifted and you know you want to get up and move around there is a YouTube channel it's called Team Body Project and this is like anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes is low impact. Uh, it gets you off the couch and moving. And I highly recommend this group um, uh, as a as a doctor. When I tell my patients, you know, to get up and move around, this is the kind of uh, low impact aerobics uh, that you can do. And you can you can do your own pace. They've got three different people sometimes that are doing it. Each one's at a different level. And you know you can pause. Uh, you can just go right through it. You can double intensity. You can use weights. Whatever you want to do. But I really like this group because you go in like fifteen to thirty second 
burst where you're doing one thing and then and you can see the little timer going across while they do it so you kind of know what's happening going on anyways I uh, highly encourage you to do that. Get your blood moving, get your body moving, get your immune system, your lymph system uh, pushing stuff out. So not only are we trying to help you out with your PEMF business and using PEMF, but we're looking out for your health too in other ways. That's one of the things that we do here uh, at the Association of PEMF Professionals. So with that, we would love to have you become a member today uh, again. Uh, we've got a special discount code that was going to be in the comments down below here. I'll get that in as soon as I'm done broadcasting. And if you have any questions or tips, contact us, info at pmfprofessionals.com. We'll be more than happy to uh, take in what you have and also answer your questions. So with that, I'm going to jump back up here to that four-leaf clover because this is what I wish everybody today and this week is that you... You get the luck of the Irish, but also that this week go especially great for you. And again, as we lift all the COVID restrictions, that they stay that way, that there's not a um, uh, pullback and everybody has to return. It looks with all the numbers I'm seeing also that it's dipping down back to uh, some super, super low numbers. So have a great rest of your week. And again, I look forward to seeing you next week where we discuss more things about PEMF and also the Association of PEMF Professionals. Take care.